Hi, my name is Leah and I did my presentation on sex education. So I specifically did it on sex education for individuals with intellectual or developmental disabilities. Um, so to make that easier to understand, um, someone with an intellectual or development disability has an IQ of 70 or below which makes it a huge range of people and a huge range of different abilities within there. Um, previously, people with disabilities were considered asexual. However, now that's considered not the case. Um, people now know that people with development or intellectual disabilities do have sexual desires and needs. Okay, so I did my journal, journal, journal article on parental perspectives of communication about sexuality and families of children with autism spectrum disorders. Um, so the study interviewed parents of kids with autism spectrum disorder. Um, they focused on two questions. The first one was what knowledge needs to be available for parents to feel confident um, when leading their child through sex education. The second one was what skills the parents need to be able to properly communicate and lead their child through these the sex education. The communication was a big one. So um, the method they did was they had 18 interviews um, and they were conducted with kids, parents of kids who were between the age of 6 and 13. So there was a wide range. Um, interviews were conducted over the phone and in person at the parents' leisure. So whether it was at work, whatever, and it was conducted in person um, in semi-structured interviews. Um, respondents were mostly moms, but there were a couple of dads in the mix. So what they found out, um, one of the main concerns um, these interviews brought up was about their parents being worried about their child's social skills. And specifically, in regards to sex education, they were worried about um, parents being worried about children being misunderstood and winding up in legal trouble. One of the examples they give was when a child, so someone with um, autism spectrum disorder may have um, noticed this pattern on a shirt and touched the shirt, um, they don't realize that that's interfering in someone's space, they see the shape. So that was kind of in regards that what their actions would be misconstrued as to other people. Um, another worry is sexual exploitation and risky sexual behavior. So ex sexual exploitation was a main one too because um, children were didn't have necessarily the skills or the understanding and got where it made it more likely for them to get into a situation like that. Um, so the author's conclusion of all the information presented was the sexual risk reduction programs need to be implemented. Um, with regards to for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, this can be implemented through the home um, and there are several other ways they suggested. Another item that came up was overall sexual health needs to be focused on, meaning they need to, and communication needs to be opened up. So meaning that parents need to learn how to communicate better and a lot of the concerns that came up within the research were I don't know if I should communicate or I don't know how to communicate and the reality is if you don't communicate then they are nobody's gonna learn so the big thing was communication and then noticing that people with intellectual and developmental disabilities do have sexual health and needs and so they need to be treated and and educated on this. So that is kind of my main presentation. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.